sunny days, so I'll meet you at the cemetery gate. All right, this presentation is about Soapstone. Uh, we might have heard this last year a little bit. Soapstone is an acronym, which is essentially some sort of little word we've, we've created by taking the first letter of a series of words, and these series of words work together in some sort of larger concept. Scuba. This one's Soapstone, and the individual letters stand for speaker, occasion, audience, purpose, stylistic, and linguistic elements, tone, organization, narrative style, and evidence. A lot of that should sound very familiar to you, and you might make the relationship uh, with these terms and analyzing literature, specifically prose, narrative, and as we'll be looking at for this upcoming lesson, it'll be poetry. So speaker, uh, we do know this term. We've heard it uh, a bit last year, and we definitely talked about it uh, prior to our fall trip. We looked at a little bit of poetry. Speaker is essentially the narrator. It's a character within a poem. And uh, is someone identified as the speaker? Might not know. They're out frequently not. Uh, but what can you guess uh, about the speaker? What might he be like? Where is he coming from? What is he trying to do? All sorts of things and like we would associate with characterization. Now, uh, there's a structural way of identifying speaker, and that can be from the first person pronoun, like I or me or we or us. Now to our O in soapstone, occasion. And this sounds pretty formal, but that's kind of what it is. What is the occasion? What is the sort of uh, reason? What's going on with this speaker? poem. Is the poem sort of set up to be like a memory? Is someone talking about something they saw when they were a kid? Um, is it a description? Of course, descriptions have a lot of imagery and these sorts of things. Also, observation. Is it a farewell address? Is it an argument? Some sort of diatribe, which is a lot like an angry rant. Is it an elegy or a declaration, a critique, or maybe something more positive like an homage or a tribute? Maybe some sort of positive, even maybe negative or confusing memory. A of Soapstone audience, of course, with all literature, authors write things uh, so people can read them. It might not be necessarily the audience of the poem, but who do you think the speaker is trying to identify as their audience? What kind of uh, guessing or assumptions can you make about the intended audience? Or, going back to not the speaker per se, but the big guy, the author, who might he be trying to influence? Purpose. Now, what is the speaker's purpose? Speak, of course, being the character, right? In what ways does this poet convey this message? Now, these are two different things. You can write a short story, a work of fiction about a character which is nothing like you. You, as a secondary student, you are the actual author, or in a poetry sense, you'd be the poet, and your character, which is your speaker, is somebody completely different. So always be sort of uh, aware. <laughs> Uh, be aware that your poet, which is our author, is very, very different from our speaker. And how uh, does our poet convey the ideas of the speaker? What is the overall message of the poem? How does the speaker try to spark a reaction in you and the audience? How is the poem supposed to make the audience feel? What is the intended effect? Subject. This is, could be like theme. What's the big idea? What is the subject of the piece? How do you know this? There should be some evidence there, right? How does the poet present his or her subject? Does he or she present it immediately, or does he or she sort of build up to it at the end? Now, this is one we should be fairly familiar with, and this is very open, and there's all sorts of stuff, especially with poetry. of stylistic and linguistic elements. We might call these uh, figurative language or literary terms and other structural elements. Syntax. Syntax is I... Uh, you know what maybe? Language, literary devices, imagery, diction. We know that to be word choice. Detail, right? A detail could form of, uh, some sort of imagery, right, as well. Descriptive words, it's our diction, it's our word choice. Metaphor, symbolism. It is a poem, right? Everything in poetry often has a bigger idea, which is symbolic or metaphorical. Tone. Now, we made the uh, distinction prior that the speaker is a character. Not a real person. The poet, of course, is the author, real person. Now, what is the author's attitude towards the subject? This could be exactly the same as the speaker. It might be very different. What emotional sense do you take from this poem? 
or this piece? How does the word choice point to the big ideas or the attitude of the author? Organization, it is a lot of stuff here because there's a lot of stuff of organization in poetry. It can be very, very simplistic and from our perspective, we will make it fairly simplistic. Um, it could be very, very detailed and we will go into some basic elements like free verse and rhyme scheme and a little bit into meter potentially and there's some crazy stuff like uh, well, sonnets aren't so crazy but there's some pretty deep stuff of which you'll be uh, expected to know going up towards to the DP in grades 9 and 10. Narrative style we know narrative story and how does the poet tell the story of the poem so what is the story what is he trying to talk about what's going on um, how does the poet reveal information? Is there some sort of rise in action? Because we can have that in something as small as a poem. What does he or she sort of hide? Is the poem dramatic? Um, how does the poet treat time? That's chronology. So is this like um, in real time? Or does this poet uh, talk about some series of events that happened over maybe many years? Chronology is an easy one to pick up on. And it's always something you need to talk about. Evidence, of course, what kind of word choice dominates the poem. So if you're saying this poem is very much of uh, this big idea, what words can you pick out which would support that is um, a very gloomy poem dealing with some heavy subject matter, or it's very optimistic dealing with something positive and uh, universally cherished? How do sound devices contribute to the poem? Poetry uh, is meant to be read. And so there are often some phonetical devices which should um, help to contribute to the poem. These are often difficult to identify and how they can contribute, but they're often very easy to identify where they are. Now, this should be pretty simple. This can be very, very sorted, but uh, you should have an idea about this soakstone as an acronym. It's easy to memorize. You write it down and then you go back. It'll take us a little bit of time to memorize each individual word of the sort of acronym but what this will do is when you are presented with a poem and you're asked to find some deeper meaning uh, meaning or justification and basically analyze this poem you copy down your soapstone you remember that the S stands for this the O for occasion etc etc tone and what have you and then it has certain bits and pieces that you can specifically be looking for as you analyze and you annotate your poem in order to find these examples of evidence and come back with a structured and logical written response.